Hi there, my name is Trisha Dumas. I'm a settler from Chichoge or Montreal. This is the land of the people Kenyan Kahaga, which is the Mohawk people. My ancestors are settlers from um, Ireland in the 1800s and the French settlers in the 1600s. That's my ancestors and my people. I work at Conestoga College, and like many of you, I am working towards indigenizing adult education and operationalizing the truth and reconciliation calls to action. In 2021, I took a prepaid leave. So I worked for five years, and on the sixth year, I had a leave because I had reduced salary for five years. And during that time, I had intended on traveling a lot, but we had some restrictions. And so I traveled in Canada when it was warm. And then on the cooler months, I decided to work with children because I'm an early childhood educator and I teach early childhood education, but I hadn't actually been working directly full-time with children and families for almost 10 years. So I was thrilled to enter back into the classroom and again was thinking deeply about indigenizing education, early childhood education specifically. I had taken some courses, the free indigenous course at UBC. I had read some books and like many of you taken PD with teaching and learning. And I had learned a lot about how to work with adult learners, but didn't quite know how to incorporate Indigenous ideas in early childhood education. But I knew that storytelling is a really effective tool for teaching and learning. And I had learned with teaching and learning that in uh, Indigenous, in Indigenizing education, we should remember that we do nothing without us, nothing about us without us. And so I consulted with a dear good friend of mine, now, uh, she's a doctor as of last week, Dr. Doe O'Brien Tings, and she and I collaborated to write a children's storybook. So this is a land acknowledgement for young children. I'm gonna share the slides with you in a moment, but we did have it printed at um, m and which is just the print shop here. And it's just, you know, a little bit hard uh, cardstock on the outside. And then on the inside are these photos. And Joe and I really wanted to have our own photos so we didn't have to worry about, um, you know, copyright or anything like that when we shared it because Doe teaches in education at a university and I teach at Conestoga College. And so these images are ours. This is a photo, for example, of my house. And we put it through a filter, which just softens it by making it appear as though it's watercolor. And uh, we included photos of our friends and families. So here's my niece who is Inuit and my aunt who's in a wheelchair because we wanted to make sure we represent diversity. And here Doe has included a picture of a TP that is our own photo that she took and so on. So you can see some traditional things with those child and mother making moccasins as an example. And so I'll share this story with you by sharing the screen with PowerPoint presentations. Here we are, and here's the book that I'd like to share with you. So I'm going to do a little bit of a slideshow, and I'll set it up because sometimes if I don't make it custom manually, it will change pages on its own, as you might be aware. So here we are. We called it The Land. There is a place, it's called the land, and on the land there are cities with buildings, parks, schools, and homes. There are brick homes, tall homes, wide homes, and small homes. In these homes, there are people, small people and tall people, young, old, and in between too, all different and equal, like me and like you. Long, long before cities, before you and before me, on the land lived First Nations, Inuit and Métis, living in wigwams, teepees, long houses, or igloos, wood, hides, or snow are materials they would use. With elders, teachers, leaders, and mentors, indigenous people, peoples were the smartest of inventors. They made hammocks, kayaks, gum, and glue, elders and teachers taught them just what to do. 
here long before us and still here today, strong indigenous communities that work, live, and play. Our neighbors, families, peers, and friends, settlers and newcomers making amends. And now in our cities, parks, schools, and homes, let's stop and let's think about all that was here long before you were you. Let's acknowledge their land and say, miigwech, thank you. And so here's a little bio about Doe O'Brien Teagues and I. And as I said earlier, nothing about us without us is something that I had learned at Conestoga College. And so we were very careful in making sure that we had the information that reflected different Indigenous groups. So I shared this book upon completion with two dear Indigenous friends, one who's a teacher here in our region and one who works in social services in Montreal. And Doe shared it with a knowledge sharer and with an elder. And both of those people gave us some feedback. We made some revisions. This was really a month and month long process, us working online carefully together to capture our ideas, our thoughts. And then I shared it with children and with families and I use it in class today because we have an assignment now in our program that invites our students to write a land acknowledgement of their own. And this is used as an example to show them that it's possible and how it might look. And so that's what I did in uh, my attempts to indigenize education at Conestoga College. You know, a few more things like Offering students the ability to do their essays orally was something else that we did. We start our circle with Indigenous, uh, we start our semester with Indigenous services and have a circle and checking in often throughout the semester. And uh, this year, for the first time, we're going to offer smudging for students who want to use it, but that's their cultural materials. We won't show them how to use it. We just leave it in the building for them if they want to use it. So those are just a few of the things we're doing to indigenize education. And um, yeah, thanks so much. Take care.